Do you feel like you're hitting bankruptcy in an area of life? You see, maybe it's business, relationships, marriage, or maybe just overall wellness. Regardless, ambitious vet, I have been there in one of those areas of life, and I know you have too. And today's episode is going to equip you to have your life become building blocks, not an escalator every time you hit a landmine in life. Wow. Imagine that. It is such a hard thing to accept, uh, especially as a military person, as an officer, especially, you know, it succeeds, succeeds as you promote, promote, promote. But there's just, just life doesn't work that way. You're going to, you're going to fail on a job. You're going to fail in a relationship. Perhaps there's always, and you know, life is defined, but the definitions and how we define ourselves is not how, if we, I think too often, you know how it is in the, in the entrepreneurship world, especially it's all about hustle. It's always about the climb. Are you ready to achieve more while doing less? If you are anything like me, Ambitious Vet, you probably spent a lot of your life spinning wheels on shit that just didn't move the needle forward. Doing things just to say you are being, quote unquote, productive, but not really winning in all areas of life on full cylinders, right? Because you just weren't simply clear on the big golden grenades that were going to explode your pathway to your life ambitions. Well, Ambitious Vet, if you're ready to work smarter versus harder and win in work and succeed at life, check out the productivity tool I use in everyday life, managing the chaos of marriage, our new home being built here in Texas, a thriving business, and all things that make life fulfilling. It's the Full Focus Planner by Michael Hyatt and Company. It's named Best Daily Planner by Forbes. Look, Ambitious Vet, I wouldn't be promoting anything on this show that I don't currently use. This is the way that you can really win the way you want to in life post-military. This tool is the way is the way to unleash your focus and your productivity. Learn more about their frameworks, tutorials, and different styles of planners by checking out our link at fullfocusplanner.com forward slash ambitious fed. Again, that's fullfocusplanner.com forward slash ambitious vet. Welcome to another Ambitious Vet Show. My name is Chris. I'm a Marine Corps combat veteran who got out and had a rough, rough five-year transition before climbing a corporate ladder to become a sales trainer to now impacting thousands of ambitious vets around the globe. The one secret I realized is that immediate transitional tools had a shelf life for the goals us ambitious vets desire to achieve post-military. So on this show, what we do is we dive into the trenches with today's most ambitious, goal-oriented, and growth-minded military veterans on the planet who have realized the same and have battle-tested golden grenades to empower you to break through to new levels of satisfaction, fulfillment, and success after stability is no longer a challenge to overcome. If you haven't already, ambitious vet, grab your pen and paper. It's time to gain the golden grenades you need to live a life of passion with purpose. It's time to get into the trenches, dig dig into your purpose, and and fire up your life fulfillment. The Ambitious Vet Podcast starts now. What's going on, Ambitious Vet? We are right back inside the trenches today with Fred Wellman. Fred is an executive director of the Lincoln Project after serving as a senior advisor for Veterans Affairs for the 2020 campaign. He's also a 22-year Army veteran, having served as an aviator and public affairs officer with over four combat tours in Desert Storm and Operation Iraqi Freedom. He's also a battle-tested, sought-after speaker, a veteran advocate, and entrepreneurship consultant. Fred, brother, are you there? I am. It's good to be here. appreciate the opportunity to chat with you. Absolutely, man. I mean, you, as we were saying this offline right now, you've done some really incredible work. You've had a full Army military career. Um, so I'll just throw it back over to you and kind of fill the gaps within that introduction. Have us just take a look within your background leading up to today. Well, I mean, it's funny how everything builds that your experience is building each other. I mean, and just in the last year, I think you and I talked previously. You know, I did, as we, as you mentioned, I was an Army officer for 20 years, West Point grad. Uh, 
aviator for most of my career. Um, I changed over to public affairs during OIF one. We were in northern Iraq. I did a bunch of uh, <laughs> I did a bunch of TV interviews, and uh, General Petraeus was like, "Oh yeah, you should do that for a living." Like, All right, <laughs> and uh, here we are. Yeah, that 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 was a that was a click. And then so I went to public affairs, and which ended up being public relations. So when I retired, I went into public relations world, um, started my own agency, um, went, did well for a while. Uh, you know, last year the pandemic hit. It it, it put the kind of the last. You know, like many businesses put the last kind of nail in that coffin. So I let that go. I had the opportunity to work in New York in a field hospital as basically it was, it's, it's a great actually today. Interestingly enough, Chris, is the anniversary of the day I got the call from a colleague who was a nurse, a gold star wife, actually. Mm. And she was head, heading to New York to be the chief head nurse of a, a field hospital staffed by special operations veterans, uh, medical wow. veterans. Wow. And she's like, yeah, we hired all these we hired all these uh, medical types didn't hire admin people. <laughs> she's, like, do you know, she's like, do you know anybody like in, you know, anybody in your network in New York who could like do admin stuff? And she described basically Battalion XO. I said, that sounds like a Battalion XO. I did that, in, you know, I did that in Iraq in 03. I could probably do it again. And uh, talked to my girlfriend and a couple of, of my, my own employees, actually. I said, look, I'm, I'm thinking about going to New York and volunteering. And, and uh, two days later, I was in my car driving to New York. And, uh, and that was, you know, again, another, what we talk about building on that experience of my military career. Um, and then when I came back and shut down scout comms, uh, I, I had known Steve Schmidt for many years from Iraq when he had come over for the vice president and I uh, reached out to him just for some guidance and he hired me on the phone. Wow. Uh, and so, you know, I've been, I've been fortunate all, all these things in your career build towards your opportunities. And then, and now as mm. executive director of the Lincoln project, I, I'm the executive director because I kind of applied the same leadership techniques I learned as an army officer. Uh, in my work, uh, getting to know the staff and getting to know the leadership of the team, you know, understand the, the strategy. So when the opportunity came, uh, as we were looking for a new executive director uh, after the campaign, I, I, I said, hey, you know, instead of looking outside, I, I'd be willing to step up the plate. And uh, I was promoted executive director in February. So, you know, yeah, it, it's it's funny how a, a career could start at West Point in 1987 and, and build towards uh, towards a certain uh, a point where we are now. Uh, I wasn't wow. a political guy, but I, I, I've led organizations, and uh, and here we are. Wow, that's a great journey, and this a lot. Thanks yeah. for allowing us to get kind of the forty thousand foot view of that. But ambitious vet, if you're listening to this closely, which I hope you are, build off your experiences. Right, that is a key golden grenade right there. Make sure that you are focusing on the human capital, your skills, your abilities, your experience, all that kind of stuff. After every opportunity you're stepping inside of, and I promise you. You'll always be opening up new doors for a more fulfilling and satisfying life. Yep. So, Fred, we all hit landmines when we get out of the uniform, right? We all do. My, mine personally, funny story, mine was I was in my own way for about five years getting out of the United States Marine Corps, right? And then it yep. became trying to find a fulfilling career, right? But you yep. have a unique story, right? Um, and I always love you know, just bringing authenticity in here, because I think it really heals veterans with what they're up to in their life, right? So right. what what do we do when life hits bankruptcy, right? Um, <laughs> whenever we just feel like, you know, things aren't going the way we want, and we're just like, screw it, but staying in the fight. Can you walk us through what that means to you? Well, you know, I think, I think we're defined as much by, you know, look, everybody fails, right? It, it is such a hard thing to accept, uh, especially as a military person, as an officer, especially, you know, it succeed, succeeds as you promote, promote, promote. But there's just, it just life doesn't work that way. You're going to, you're mm -hmm. going to fail on a job. You're going to fail on a relationship, perhaps. There's always, and, you know, life is defined, but the definitions and how we define ourselves is not how, if we, if, I think too often, you know how it is in the, in the entrepreneurship world, especially. It's all about hustle. It's always about the climb. You know, oh, double yeah. digit growth, right? It's hustle, hustle. And I used to, I remember when I was a CEO, I, I really got into that world when I was the CEO of my company. And I mean, it was an eight people company. And Jesus Christ, <laughs> 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 talk about, talk about, talk about hubris. Like, oh, look at me, I'm a CEO. <laughs> and, right. And, and the, but you get into that world, that that hustle porn. You see it every day. Get up and grind. And and on the inside, you're like, fuck, I did not want to get up and grind today. <laughs> I mean, there's yeah. a lot of days like I was like, you yeah. know, and, and as we came into that last couple of years, we I struggled, and I I've been very open in other forums about my mental health challenges I had. I lost some guys in combat. I lost my first wife and, and baby to a car accident. I've had some mm. very discreet, I've had some very distinct struggles with my mental health. And then so you throw in leaving that unchecked, entrepreneurship, the grind of entrepreneurship, all those things come to a head. 
and, and you're gonna you're gonna have some tough times. And I, I ran those tough times, and and um, we had we'd struggled for a couple of years, and the, the pandemic was pretty much the final straw as far as my ability. Um, mm-hmm. And I and I'm very open. It wasn't just loss of a business that left that left Scout Comps behind. In mm-hmm. the end, a big chunk was my loss of ability to manage it anymore. That I was I was waking up in a job that I that I was the owner of. And I didn't like it. You know, I, mm-hmm. that's, that's horrifying to say, but I was like, I don't really enjoy this job. And how do you, how do you face the fact that you are the owner that, that six people's jobs and livelihoods re- rely on you, clients rely on you and you're in a job you hate. So how do mm-hmm. you do that? Um, you can't sell it when there's a pandemic and nobody's buying PR firms. And so I had to make a very difficult, difficult decision to shut the firm down. And with that shutting down meant all of my income, the small business loans that we had taken to survive, keep the company above water, you know, for three years, all that comes due. And that, and then when the price comes due, it's uh, in my case, a, half, a nearly half million dollar bankruptcy. And, and that's, that's humiliating. It's uh, you feel like, you, you know, again, that, that feeling of failure. So how do you deal with it? Well, for me, it was like, okay, I got to sit back. Here's the assets I've available to me. You know, it's just like we are when we, and I'm an old airborne guy. Uh, Hunter first guy. I was, I was actually not airborne. I don't take credit for that, but I, I'm a ra- leg ranger. But I was in the Hunter first airborne. There's a great scene in uh, in Band of Brothers where they're heading into the Battle of Budget. Jimmy Fallon makes it a cameo. Is if you remember the scene, Jimmy Fallon's a, a lieutenant driving a jeep. Is the is the odd? It totally it totally throws you <laughs> out of the show because it's Jimmy Fallon. Right. But uh, he's talking to uh, uh, he's talking to Winters, Major Winters at the time, and he says, "Hey, you know, you, know, you guys are going to be surrounded." And and Winters says, uh, "You know, we're." We're the airborne. We're supposed to be surrounded, <laughs> you know? and so that's the airborne way. You jump in, you, you figure out what assets. That's what I did. So after this failure, I had to take a step back and say, "Well, what is failure?" At fifty-five, um, I was single. Is like, okay, what do I want to do with my life, and what is success in this life? Mm. And for me, at that mm. moment, I, you know, I reached out to some mentors, and I, I did. I sucked up the bankruptcy, and it's come back to haunt me. It's funny. My job is I'm in politics now. You know, somebody did a, <laughs> just last night. Just actually, just this morning, some some far right personality was was bashing me on Twitter, and and of course they're bringing up the bankruptcy. Like, oh, this guy's a failure. He's got bankruptcy. He's like, okay, <laughs> yet here I am. <laughs> and, yeah. and, and, and you follow me on Twitter. Why? <laughs> you know, it's like I'm such a failure. You can't let go of talking about me. So it's it's mm. it is. Um, but I think that's what defines us. And for me, in that circumstance, when. Uh, and it goes back even the loss of men, the loss of my wife is you, you take a step back. It's like, okay, here's where I am. I can't quit. That's not an mm. option. I, mean, I right. do have to pay the bills. I can't, I can't go hide in a corner. It'd be, it'd be fun to curl up in the fucking floor and call it a day, but that's simply not an option. You have to provide livelihood in this case for myself and my family and my family. So I, I think that's, I think that's where I felt, I felt you fall back on your training. You fall back on ranger school where, you know, there was nights in ranger school where I, you know, I was freezing. I was a winter ranger. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, Mount Delonica, Georgia. It's snowing and then turning to rain, or, or raining, and turning to snow, and it's miserable. And and you're starving and you're tired and you keep going. And so even in the worst times, like the, when my first wife was killed, uh, or when I had to declare this half million dollar bankruptcy, it was a humiliating experience. Um, I was like, well, you know, I got my military retirement, I got free health care, um, I got this you know, used Mercedes, <laughs> got an Xbox, you know, and, and I've got enough money to make rent. Um, so I'm just going to, I'm, I'm actually pretty well off. I'll be right. okay. Uh, right. And then the best thing is I had this lifetime of work where much of my work, especially as a benefit corporation was about paying it forward to others. Uh, and, and I never very often called in favors. Um, but uh, there's a, you know, sometimes, you know, there, karma, if you will, is, you know, so, so I, when I started calling people saying, Hey, um, I know I've helped you in the past. Uh, I could use some help. Um, the most gratifying part was all those years of, of being there for others that they all stepped up in a, again, in a brilliant, that's, that's why I have the job I have now today. Cause one of my former mentors and a guy I'd helped out in his life, um, was like, Hey, my turn to help you. So much can work for us. Um, so that's, that's a long answer to a short question. <laughs> no, that was good, brother. That was a good, I think that was a lot of really good wisdom and ambitious vet. I don't know about you, but what I took away from that is sometimes when you hit those bankruptcy moments in life, sometimes you just got to set back and check in with yourself and associate with your past experience. Like for me, Marine Corps, you know, going through that crucible week, that was not any fun. And the funny thing is, is I, I was a squad leader. I was on, on pace to become like getting out of boot camp as a 
uh, an E2 PFC. I got fired on the top of the damn Reaper hike in, <laughs> in Camp Pendleton, and I didn't even fall out. I was pushing my guide up, but I think uh, one of the drill instructors just had a uh, vendetta against me. But in that moment, you know, this is a funny story, but um, in that moment, if I'm going through hard times, I can always associate on like running out of water. You know, only having three MREs, man, going up the Reaper hike and just be like, wow, how did I get through that? You know, mental toughness. Where are my assets? Where, you know, where's, where's stuff that I can uh, really dive into, which is hits to yeah. my next point, right? Mentors have been, from what I've taken away from you and multiple yeah. conversations with you, have been a really big guiding post for you. So what, what's the importance of mentors and how do we leverage them for our success? Well, it's everything. And, and I think too often um, we confuse having a mentor is having a, having like a sugar daddy, right? <laughs> you know, I've seen someone, I've, you know, I've seen my peers like glue themselves to one person. And, and, and that, that, you know, for me, mentorship has always been one, again, it's, it's a karma thing. Um, and I'll offer a couple of examples. Um, for me, um, you know, within the military, uh, I had, I had this guy, David Petraeus, who was a young major, who was my professor at West Point. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and in a very small class. And I got to know uh, intimately from, from just seeing him in class three times a week. Uh, and then flash forward, you know, six years later, I see him at Fort Campbell. He's the young Lieutenant Colonel or older Lieutenant Colonel. He's getting ready to be the division G3, the Harper's Airborne. Took him around flying for a week at an exercise. I was a scout pilot then. We, we were like the taxi drivers. And, uh, you know, <laughs> re, you know, connected with him, connected about my future, got to know him well, you know, flash forward, you know, my, my wife gets killed there. Flash forward, you know, eight years later, guess what? I'm back in the army. He's a two-star general. 101st Airborne, you know, so, you know, he, he, you know, took interest in my career, was able to, you know, decided I should be a public affairs officer because it fit my actual talent. Um, you know, that kind of mentorship over the years, it was, it was you know, very, late. that's what Petraeus was so good about, you know, that mm. you didn't have to be, I mean, Petraeus didn't look for you to suck up, but, you know, you stayed in touch and you, and you, and you, and you listened and you took his advice and, and usually it was good advice. Um, and then, you know, years later when I started Scout Comms, I, 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 uh, a colleague introduced me to his um, actually client in my old firm that actually I quit slash got fired from. <laughs> um, you know, he reached out. He goes, "Hey, my co- my brother in law is a huge titan in the public relations industry." Turned out he was um, when I started Scout. And when I started Scout Comms, you know, Fred his name is Fred Thompson. He was a huge mentor of mine. And you know, there was days when you know there's no money coming in and no clients. He gave me a lot of good advice on how to find clients, uh, what to do, and and even in the tough times. I remember I remember when we were like no money and. I tell the story often. We we were struggling, and uh, I had a house. I was working in my basement, and I called Fred. I was like, you know, I'm really frustrated, Fred. I was like, you know, I'm working my ass off, but I'm just not getting the revenue in. You know, we're not getting clients. He goes, yeah, half faith. I said, you know, I, I don't know though, man. I'm, gonna, I'm ready to freaking climb on the roof and just jump off the damn house. Hmm. He's like, yeah, I understand. He goes, the thing is, you know, I've been to your house. It's only two stories. You probably just break your leg and you'll still be broke. <laughs> so, you, know, you gotta love friends like that. You just suck it up and get back to work. Yeah. Like, hey, that's, a, that's a fair point, you know. That's a, yeah, you just break your leg. You'll still be broke when you're down. Like that's fair. You yeah, know, you'll be broke with a broken leg. I'm like that's a fair point. And, and you know that's what I need to hear. I need just somebody to kick me in the ass, tell me to get back to work. And wow. and then you know again here I I had, I had become a mentor, uh, a, a relationship with Steve Schmidt, both as a mentor and as a colleague. And, and, and when I, when I lost scout comms and I let my, all my, it, I got all my employees jobs for the most part. And, uh, I said, she's like, I forgot what I'm going to do. And I made a list. I, I sat down in my notebook and I made a list of all these people I had worked with people who I had helped over the years. Wow. Um, <clears throat> and, and started making those calls and, and Steve was on that list. And, and again, and the third piece of this puzzle, I think for me is mentorship is a two-way street is too often, I think, it's, if people think they take. So for me, my one of the things I've always done, I still do this day with my ones with Scout Consult with now, is when somebody calls me and needs some advice, I'll take the call. And and you never know. And I used to do this with a lot of young um, student veterans, for example, in mm. D.C. And uh, this one young man was at George Washington University, and uh, he was running their veterans program there. He's a great kid. He decided to run like a um, – we had just gotten in touch and I took him to lunch one day. We met for coffee, sucked my brain dry. And then, and he ran a, a program for veterans, like a, a, a public service project one day. I ended up being his driver because he was so freaked out. I was like, look, let me drive because you're going to fucking kill us. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I'm driving this, I'm driving this 23 year old kid around, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and so, you know, flash forward, um, one day I'm sitting in my office, I get a call and it's like, Hey man, it's, you know, such, such, um, you know, I was like, yeah, he goes, Hey, I've been at an internship this summer. And they could really use some help. I said, well, where are you? He goes, I'm at the Elizabeth Dole Foundation. Hmm. I said, Libby Dole? Like, 
Senator Dole's wife? He's like, yeah. I was like, oh, he goes, yeah, she started this thing for military caregivers and um, they're launching like three weeks and it's a hot mess. And, wow. you know, could, would you be willing to come up and talk to Mrs. Dole? I'm like, just to meet Libby Dole. Like, yeah, I'd love to meet Libby Dole. You know? <laughs> I'm a super fan. So I drive up to the, I drive up to the Watergate Hotel you know, apartments in DC and I, I sit down with Senator Elizabeth Dole, who's uh, just an amazing human being. And uh, we hit it off like old friends and she hires me on the spot. Mm. And, and to this day, we're still friends. Like, you know, when I was in New York, I'm sitting in my office in New York at the hospital uh, about five days into it. And my phone rings and I answer. It's like, hey, Fred, this is Senator Dole. I'm like, I'm like okay, everybody <laughs> shut up. I'm talking to Senator Dole. You know? and, 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 you know, she, but, but again, think of this, the arc of that story, right? It's because I mentored a young man who needs some help and, and I gave him what I could. I supported him. And then karma, you know, the, whatever you want to call it, the you know, Lord or God, whatever you believe in, came back and said, all right, I'm going to give you an opportunity. An opportunity to provide me with a lot of, of wonderful support and, and business for my business. So, so I've always believed that mentorship is a spectrum that we uh, are very blessed with in the military. It's sort of part of the military in a lot of ways, mm. but it should also be a part of your business life and it should very much be a part of your personal life. And, and yeah. for me, you can see those stories across the arc of a, 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 not just a career, I mean, an adult life. I mean, we're talking from when I was a young cadet at West Point in 1986, all the way up to just six months ago when I got the current job I'm in, the arc of my career always has these hallmarks, these pivot points always involved with mentorship, mm. uh, be it giving or taking. Um, so I'm very passionate about the idea of one being a mentor for others because it does, it does help you. There's what, when you give, you get, you, you, you're able to sort out problems, you're able to, you're able to see perspectives on problems that maybe you didn't see. But then again, it comes back to you when, when you do need help and then there's, there's people can advise you and guide you. It's, it's worth every penny. So, and you don't have to suck up. You know I mean, I don't, I'm, I joke a lot of times. I'm not a very good nurturer of these relationships. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but you can do it the right way where when you win, when times get tough and you really need that, that tough love or somebody to help you, um, they'll be there for you. So yeah. I'm a big fan of it. Yeah, that's great. So yeah. Yeah. Ambitious that, you know, really what I took from that and uh, if you're taking a, you're taking notes here, make sure you're writing down the key golden grenades you can take action on immediately after this interview, but just setting down anytime you're having like a, a brief identity crisis, which sometimes ambitious vets, we're always trying to hit that next goal, that next ambition, you know, stop, slow down, make that, make that list of top people that have contributed to your life and just start making calls, give up the yeah. pride and just ask for help. That's the moral of that story. And I hope you got a lot more golden grenades from there. So I want to kind of pivot into mental health and entrepreneurship, right? Sure. You, you do a great job as far as tying the two. And I, I don't know, you may disagree with this, but I just feel like when ambitious vets are getting out these big goals, but are lacking, like just the human capital, the social capital, self-awareness to actually right. execute on them. You know, the first few years is us just dealing with our minds, right? And then we're just trying to figure out how to be successful with entrepreneurship, right? You know, either simultaneously or just we're trying to get to that point, right? So what, how, do, how does mental health and entrepreneurship tie together for you? It's, it's everything. I think, I think yeah. it's, it's, I've always said that I felt like the mental health aspects of being an entrepreneur uh, are is one of the things that is never talked about enough and, and, and does, it does affect everything. Again, you, you're the one who has, to, it all weighs on your shoulder when you're an entrepreneur, especially if you, it's, you build your vision, you're successful, mm -hmm. there's going to be tough times. Um, it's hard handling people. It's hard to handle the crisis you face. Uh, it's hard managing the money. Um, it's hard being the guy that's always on, you know, you, you get up and, and you go into work and you, um, you have to face these things um, each day on your own. And so I think, I think for me, the, the aspect of mental health, in the end, being such a key to both success and failure of the organization, in the end, uh, failure of the organization it lasted 10 years, but the, 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 the ending of the, my organization was, was in many ways my mental health. You know, as I faced a mental health crisis as years of managing my survivor's guilt, managing that mm. came to a head in, in, in 2017, um, it deeply affected the business, right? The, the, the stability of the CEO, the stability of the, of the, lead, the owner, it affects everything. And in many ways, I, I did, I hurt my company. I ended up losing a lot of my employees. I had to do a transition of all of them, almost all new employees. It was interesting, as, I met, as my mental health improved, I got a whole new set of employees who were sort of more aligned with that. Um, not the ones before weren't great. It was just, they had to go through my crisis with me and that's not easy for any employee. And I don't fault them for that at all. But having said that, I don't think we address it enough. I don't think we, we mm. I don't think we're honest with ourselves. One, we already know veterans are sucky at it. We already know veterans 
um, struggle. Now it's been wonderful with the our post 9/11 generation because I'm an old coup, but I'm post 9/11. Um, the post 9/11 generation, we've always been very open about it. We've been very honest about. It. I think we're much more than my like Desert Storm. Desert Storm, we didn't talk about it. I came, I lost two guys in Desert Storm. You know, a month later, I was home, and and we we just didn't talk about it. You know, mm. it was just done. These guys right. died. I mean, honestly, I was home. I was home six weeks after my guys got killed, and we didn't talk about it. Like it didn't happen. Like I don't remember. I literally don't even remember talking to my ex-wife, or my former wife, about it who passed away, uh, who would later pass away. Um, just didn't, you know. And then, and when my first wife died, I was a, I was a company commander. Mm. Okay, what am I supposed to do? You know, I lost a wife and baby. I was supposed to keep on driving on. Well, that was what army officers did. And when that came to a crisis later in my career, um, I had to make a difficult choice. I basically lost my career because the mental health crisis of all those 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 consolidated losses. So, so I think I think we already struggle as military service members with the, the the challenges of our mental health because you know you don't want to be wounded you don't want to let the team down you know you, you got to get your shit together because they need you in the fight you know there's no time exactly. hover hustle 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 now you throw in like i said the hustle porn the ambitiousness right of who we are as not when you become an entrepreneur afterwards per se or even an even employee of some of a company you never want to admit you got a challenge but i tell you i i struggled mightily i it was it was there was times where we lost business or now it's struggling me. I and then you have to figure out how you're going to build the the walls to make sure you can survive. For me, I, I I'm proud of what I did. In the end, I did some smart things. One was, um, my daughter was available. Um, she was between jobs. Um, she just graduated college, just honors, you know, scholarship. And wow. I said, you know, why don't you come work for me? Because she knew the truth about what's going on in my life. She knew what I was struggling with, and she became my assistant. And that was very helpful to me because I was like, I had somebody in that office who. Could keep me on track. Let's say I know you're having a rough day. You need to answer these four emails <laughs> before five o'clock. You're like, okay, I'll answer the four. You know, so having a very trusted, a trusted person who was on the inside, um, to you know, finding that therapist, finding that treatment, and 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 being honest about your treatment and seeking it out, and that helped me quite a bit. Uh, and then building that again, mentors helped me quite a bit. So when I was struggling mightily, I built a circle. I had a circle of fellow CEOs that I had nurtured relationships that I could say, hey man. I'm struggling. What do you do in these situations? Or mm. I, I need you. I just need to talk. Um, yeah. I'm really fortunate to have a really great uh, set of like West Point classmates who I've stayed in touch with over the years who sort of turn, turned into my squad for a while there. So, so the hardest thing I think to do is, is it's the mental health aspect, but the isolation aspect that goes with it. Mm. Because we as service members, we as veterans say, well, I'm always succeeding. And then, then you get into the hustle porn world where you always have to be succeeding, right? You can't, can't ever admit you're not succeeding. You can't, can't admit you're not getting double digit growth. Otherwise, you're not cool. And gotta be in the Forbes 5,000. You gotta be, you know, veteran of the year or entrepreneur. You know, I mean, it's constant fucking hustle, pardon my language. <laughs> it's constant, it is. constant it is. hustle. And, and, and so you can't admit. So we've created these cultural barriers to success. Um, and then we actually fail. We, we create a, a, and then when do you fall? You fall really freaking hard. Yeah. Um, and so, so I, I'm a big believer that, you know, I've got a great therapist. I, I still meet with him monthly, although we've gone through most of our, it was, it was weekly for a while there. Um, I've got these great uh, partners. I, I've got, I've got people who know. And it was interesting to me, the arc of the whole thing. So when, one of the final stars I had to deal with was my divorce right before I closed my company. And when my wife decided to, and we're still friends, but when my wife had to finally divorce me uh, after years of having to keep me alive, um, I was struggling. So I, I remember I, I talked to my daughter about it. I said, look, I'm really in trouble here. I need it. Cause she goes, look, you need to tell your senior. We had two senior executives. I, I had two vice presidents that worked for me or senior executives. And uh, she's like, you gotta tell them. I'm like, oh, I'm not gonna do that. I made a mistake last time. I told them last time and look at it. She goes, no, these guys are different. You tell them. And I called my, I called my two senior people. My company said, look, I got like, I'll let you know I'm, I'm in trouble right now. You know, my wife wants to get divorced. I'm not in a good mental space. Um, I don't want to let you down. And they're like full, st and one was a veteran. One was the sister of a veteran. And it was like full stop, stop talking. <laughs> okay, what are we splitting up? <laughs> you know, and I'm sitting on the phone as my two most senior executives, my firm, digging up my duties and said, You need to take you take care of you. We're gonna take care of the firm and and you get right. And it was so gratifying yeah. to me. It was such an important lesson to one, surround yourself with trusted people who believe in you and understand your journey, like these two people, women did. Um, and and be be honest about it. And that's why I've always been very open for for over a year, I actually did a video with the VA just after that, where I talked about my EMDR treatment for my PTSD, where I talked about mental health challenges. And that's why I talk very openly about my business closing, um, because people need to see and understand that there is help that you can heal. Every time I talk about my mental health, by the way, every time I talk about it, 
a guy who looks like me, inevitably, uh, an older guy who maybe was lieutenant colonel or higher, will reach out to me via one of my social channels and say, holy shit, dude, I'm so glad you said something because yeah. I'm I'm doing these things. I'm like, okay, yeah. so do you, do you, you want to save your marriage? Yeah, then get F in therapy. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, but I'm 55, I'm 60. I'm not Look at me, I'm 55. Um, I see people now, I'm not gonna lie to you, Chris. I meet people, I, I want, this is a true story. So right before the pandemic, I was at a conference. The week that the week the shutdown, the week for the shutdown, I was at a conference a year ago. And I walked up to a friend of mine and she runs a nonprofit. I used to be on her board about mm-hmm. three years prior to this. And I stand there and she looks at me and looks away. And then she stand, looks kind of weird. I said, hey, she's like, I didn't recognize you. <laughs> she's like, she thought I was like a creeper, right? And, and I'm like, yeah. She's like, I said, what do you mean? She goes, you look different. Did you get work done? Like she accused me of getting plastic surgery. I said, yeah, I did. I, I worked on my fucking mental health. Wow. And, yeah. and, and she literally said, your, your eyes are less something. Your shoulders mm. are straighter. Your hair is less gray. Believe it or not. You know, it's like literally by addressing my mental health and this burden I'd been carrying, my, I literally changed physically. I mean, what does that tell you about our mental health and how it affects us as leaders? And Every so wow. I'm very, yeah, I think I, I can't emphasize enough just how important it is. And, it, and it's an embarrassing subject. No one who's a hustler or, or, or even like you said, an ambitious veteran or an ambitious businessman wants to admit they're tough. But, you know, if I, I fell off my bike yesterday and got all cut up, right? Well, I'm going <laughs> to treat that. And, you know, mental health is no different. Like, we have to mm. treat it the same way. Uh, yeah. it, and it's just as dangerous. It can kill you just as much as that will. Yeah. Well, thanks for, you know, hitting every angle of that question powerfully. <laughs> and ambitious vet, you know, Fred Wellman here, he's been featured as Hill Vets top 100 most influential people in uh, 2014 and 2015. And Scout Comms, you know, they have just done some amazing market research within the veteran community, which I truly believe looking back and all you gotta do is Google some of the market research they've partnered up with some of the top military media um, out there right now, right now in the United States. And it's just, it's forwarding the community. It's forwarding the community. And I, I can only imagine the, the type of impact that that company for 10 years did as far as collecting data, persuading decision makers with data and just all that brother. So I just acknowledge you for that 10 years of just moving the community forward because that work that you did was amazing thank you uh, we're real proud of it. we i think we made a difference i think we helped some really key issues uh you know one of i'm real proud of how we work with uh, a, a coalition of 16 organizations to help um veterans who couldn't have children get the va to be able to pay for that to have um in vitro fertilization their techniques i mean we, we literally have kids today because the work we did trying to get that law turned around so yeah, it was, it was an impactful organization, I think, in its time, and 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 then yeah, it's something I'm still proud of. I think, and it lives yeah. on. My employees, my employees, have all found really great great work still in the community, the veteran community. Um, the veterans research that we built was was purchased by a, a, another firm and still lives on. So, yeah, I mean, it, it in the end, it, it, the scenario ended up working out very well. That the work we did was able to live on, and, and I was able to find a new start for my life um, as CEO and not have to you know go back to ground zero. It's amazing. It's amazing. All the experiences stacked up. That's the trend of this whole episode. So I'm going yeah. to uh, sum this up, Fred, with your three golden grenades and then we'll part ways, brother. So there's an ambitious vet out there inside inside the trenches of life right now. They're an ambitious vet. They've been out for at least three years. Um, they've ha- they've experienced career stability, but they're just lacking a sense of purpose. They may be confused or they're just unfulfilled. What would be three wisdom bombs that you would give to that ambitious vet to keep them moving forward in their life, career, or business? It's funny. I, I talked to a, a podcast about a year ago, the Marriott Today, or the day before a year ago today, and, and that was one, a, a similar question. And, 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 and what I always tell people was, you know, the thing about us is so many of us, when you're losing that purpose, you had to find a, find a way to serve your community. Find it. And that, that could be anything. It could be volunteering in your local community. It could be starting a firm that, like I did with Scout Commons to help others. But, but I do find that that purpose is leading a purpose-driven life um, is is much more than just making ends meet or making money. Um, you know, the day after I had that conversation with the gentleman Alice Cack, I got the call to go to New York to work at a field hospital. Have I ever run a field hospital? No. Have I ever worked in a hospital? Never. Did I run a hospital <laughs> for six weeks? Oddly, I did. <laughs> I bullshitted my way through it. So I do tell our peers that the, one, of the, one, of the, one of the key pieces of wisdom is, you know, find find a purpose, find a way to give back to your community or your, or even if it's local, you know, it's national, whatever it may be. Uh, a purpose-driven life is why we raised our right our, our right hand and served the country. 
Um, if you're living your life and and it's got it's not without purpose, you, you it could be a very big piece of what you're missing in your life. No, that's great. That's awesome. So, Fred, where can uh, an ambitious vet go find out more about you and what you're up to with the Lincoln Project? <laughs> well, Fox News will tell you all about it. No, I uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously the Lincoln Project. Our website, LincolnProject.us. We are a political organization. We are um, we believe we're a pro democracy organization. Most of our focus right now is on on voting rights and ensuring that that every American has a chance to vote and, and, and live in a democracy. We 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 faced some very tough times the last four years, obviously, and and we face more in the future. So we are we're somewhat of a controversial organization. That's uh, no question about that. Um, but we, I do believe very strongly in the mission of what we're trying to do, which is live by the values that Lincoln envisioned, which is, you know, a democracy that is equal for all men. Um, so I'm very proud of the work. So LincolnProject.us, I'm on Twitter at FP Wellman, uh, Frederick Paul Wellman, FP Wellman. I, I, I do most of my philosophizing on Twitter. <laughs> uh, and, and, and of course, anytime. But, you know, it's, 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 a, it's, I'd love to hear more from folks. I mean, what we do is uh, unique. Uh, we partner with a lot of organizations, no matter what their party is. And if the goal is to save our democracy and ensure that every American has a chance to be part of that democracy, then we're definitely in the same place. It doesn't matter what our partisan uh, divide may be. Um, our, our nation needs everyone. It's a great message, message Fred. So I'm going to leave, leave the Ambitious Vet with that. And Fred, I just want to say thank you for being an Ambitious Vet. Thank you for being a guy that's kind of led, laid out the breadcrumbs for the rest of us young guys, post 9-11 vets, to follow. And uh, we wish you nothing but success. Thanks for joining the show. I appreciate it. Great opportunity. Keep it up. Good work. The Ambitious Vet is available on all popular podcast platforms. Go to vettrainingcoaching.com to subscribe, rate, and share with fellow vets. Ready to hit refresh on your daily productivity? The Full Focus Store is bursting with new products designed to help you work smarter, not harder. It's good news for if you're a Marine like me, a crane eater. We need to have things make us look smarter. And uh, God only knows we work harder sometimes. But they're based on, it's based exactly on their science back full focus system. Each tool equips you, ambitious vet, to eliminate overwhelm, tame your to-do list, and achieve your most ambitious goals. I promise you, if you go check it out, you will not be disappointed. They have frameworks, tutorials, and tons of different styles of planners to choose from. Just go visit fullfocusplanner.com forward slash ambitious vet. Again, that's fullfocusplanner.com forward slash ambitious vet. You will be happy you did.